So you're looking at the weather before you go fly and something doesn't look quite right with the weather report. You just need a little bit more information about the weather so you can make a good decision and avoid hazardous weather. The perfect tools to help you do this are called pilot reports or PIRIPS. These are reports that other pilots give to ATC when the weather they're expecting doesn't quite match up to the weather reports. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find these from your official weather source, which is aviationweather.gov, and how to decipher them because it can be a little tricky to read. As soon as you open up aviationweather.gov, you'll notice that the map here on the home screen has a lot of different symbols and colors on it. If you scroll down below the map, you'll notice that these are mostly pirips. And you can see here that there are basically three different types, turbulence pirips, icing pirips, and other weather pirips. We need to click on the individual pirip to find out what it is, but these symbols represent the severity of the weather the pilot's experiencing. As you can see, the severity can be nil, light, moderate, or severe. Now, in case you didn't know, nil just means no turbulence or icing. Maybe the forecast is calling for moderate turbulence, but a pilot flew through that area and didn't notice anything. This would be good information to know. Okay, before we break this information down, let's look at one more way to get these pirips because you might find this a little more useful. Let's go up here to Observations, then click Aircraft Reports. As you can see, we have the same reports, but now we've got an option down here to type in the center airspace we'll be flying in. Now this is something that a lot of instructors don't teach, but you need to know it because you also need to know it when you're checking NOTAMs as well. This is a map of the Air Route Traffic Control Centers, or ARTCCs. These are the identifier codes for who owns the airspace you're flying in. Now, when you talk to these center controllers in this airspace, you'll just refer to them by their name. For example, this ZME area is owned by Memphis Center. ZFW is owned by Fort Worth Center. And when you look in the chart supplement, you can see who owns the airspace you're flying in. As you can see, at Benita Municipal Airport, it's owned by Kansas City Center, but these secret squirrel codes are nowhere to be found in here. If someone from the FAA is watching this, I'm begging you to put this map at the end of the chart supplement because pilots need to know these codes and that would make it a lot easier to find them. And as I said earlier, not only will you need these codes to find pirips, but you also need to know them to find center notums. Until they add this map somewhere easier to find, I recommend taking a snapshot of it with your phone. I'll also put a link in the description where you can find this thing. Okay, so now that we know the ARTCC we need for the airspace we're flying in, we can go back to aviationweather.gov and type it in here where it says center ID. Now, just like all the airports here in the continental US, to get the right data, you have to add a K. So if I want to look at Memphis Center's pirips, I'm going to type in KZME. Remember this ARTCC thing, it's going to come back when we start talking about NOTAMs. As you can see, we've got some distances to choose from. I usually just keep it here on the 200 statute mile selection, then I'll click Get Reports. And now we're looking at all the pirips in the Memphis Center airspace. Okay, before I explain how to decode these pirips, I do want to point out that there's a handy document that explains a lot of what you might see on a pirip at the end of the chart supplement. After you watch this video, you might want to take a look at that. Okay, let's zoom in and talk about how to decipher all this Chinese gibberish. Let's start with the first column. The first three letters you see here is the closest large airport where the incident occurred. This makes it easy to quickly determine if there are any pirips near where you're going to be flying. Next, we have the letters UA, which lets you know that you're looking at a pirip. I'm not really sure what UA stands for, but I like to think of UA as a usual advisory, because if you ever see UUA, this would indicate an urgent pirip and you'd really want to pay attention to one of those. Now we see the letters OV, which stands for over. This is the spot the pilot was flying over when he gave the report. As you can see, these locations are usually given in radial DME from different VOR stations. In other words, this pirate occurred on a 090 bearing from the Memphis Vortac, and it was 25 miles from the station. This pirip was given directly above the Memphis Vortac. On this third line, we see another radial DME example. When I say radial DME, I'm specifically talking about their bearing from something. In this example, this aircraft's bearing from this location was 130 degrees at 35 miles. The first three numbers indicate the bearing, and the last three represent the distance. EHR is Henderson Airport, so this aircraft was on 130 degrees bearing from the airport at 35 miles. And now we know exactly where this guy was when he made the report. By the way, if you're still a little confused on the whole bearing thing, I explain it in a lot more detail in my video on VOR navigation. I'll throw that link in the description if you want to watch it after this. Next, we have the letters TM, which stands for time. This is the time the pirate was given in Zulu time. For example, this pirate was made at 1038 Zulu, and this one was made at 1042 Zulu. 
After that, we have the altitude that the aircraft was flying at when they made the report. And all you have to do here is add two zeros to see what that is. The first one we see here is 40,000 feet. This one was at 4,000 feet, and this one, 3,000. If for some reason the altitude was unknown, you'd see F-L-U-N-K-N. And of course, this weird looking code would be on here when I'm trying to sound cool in a video. I looked around at a few different places and I can't seem to find the official answer, but I'm pretty sure it stands for during climb out. Here's another one that looks kind of weird and I'm pretty sure this one stands for during departure. Now if I could get a weather expert to confirm my suspicions in the comments, I would really appreciate it. But based on the type of pyrips that they are and the pyrips I've given, I'm pretty sure I'm right about these. Okay, so next, the TP stands for type of aircraft. As you can see here, this aircraft is a Boeing 757, and this one is a CRJ-7. This is extremely important to keep in mind, especially when you're looking at turbulence pyrips. If a Boeing 757 is reporting moderate turbulence, I definitely don't want to fly my Cessna 152 through that, because that would probably be severe or even extreme in my airplane, and that could completely rip us apart. And it's extremely difficult to fly two airplanes at the same time. Now, I know we can't make it up to fly level 400, but pilots report moderate turbulence at low altitudes all the time. Okay, so now we start getting into the three different types of pyrips, turbulence, icing, and other weather conditions. Let me refresh the screen and see if there are some new pyrips. I'm making this video while I'm deployed, so it's really early in the morning in the States, and there aren't a lot of pyrips yet. Here we go, so after the aircraft type, we can see a few different things. The letters SK indicate sky conditions, so we're looking at cloud reports here. As you can see, these are very similar to TAFs and METARs because you have to add two zeros to these numbers to see where the clouds are. But these numbers are in MSL, not AGL, because pilots typically glance at their altimeter when they're reporting these clouds to ATC. So for this sky condition report, the bases of these clouds are at 3,000 feet MSL, and the tops are at 4,500 feet MSL. So this is a pretty thin layer. Now, with these sky conditions, there are a lot of different things you might see. You might see multiple layers reported, or you may just see the bases like we do here. As you can see here, the bases of these clouds are at 1,400 feet MSL. And as VFR pilots, this is the most important information for us because we need to know if we can legally fly VFR. If we look at the airport on the map, you'll see that the field elevation here is 472 feet MSL. So if we subtract the field elevation from the base of these clouds, you'll see that the ceilings here are at 928 feet AGL. And since KMWA is class delta, you're not going to be able to legally take off VFR from this field. And this is what makes these pyrips super handy because the METAR might be calling the ceilings at 1,500 feet, but if I check the pyrips and see this report, I'm not taking off VFR or you shouldn't be doing that anyways. Now you're starting to see why these can be super helpful. In addition to that, the sky condition can also let you know when the sky is clear. I've looked at a lot of TAFs and METARs that were reporting ceilings of a couple hundred feet then walked outside to see the sky was crystal clear. Sometimes those clouds move out way faster than they thought or the weather just didn't do what they expected it to. Listen to me trying to convince you that the weather forecast may not be accurate. You probably know this way better than I do. Okay, so something else you might see on one of these is a WX. And after these letters, you would normally see a report of the in-flight visibility. This would be indicated by the letters FV, followed by the visibility in statute miles. So in this example, the pilot's claiming that his in-flight visibility is 10 statute miles. FV99SM lets you know that the in-flight visibility is unlimited. And in addition to that, you might see reports of rain, snow, and other types of weather with the standard weather contractions. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that we've already talked about those quite a bit in the past. Oh boy, we all know what this one means now, but I'll spare you this time. The next type of data that you might see typically comes on an icing pyrip. When you see a TA, this lets you know the temperature at that altitude in Celsius. So in this example, the temperature reported by this PC-12 at flight level 210 was a minus 15 degrees Celsius. The M here stands for minus. Then as you might have guessed, this is an icing pirate because this IC stands for icing. And it looks like he was picking up trace rhyme icing. That's probably not a big deal to him. He probably has anti-icing equipment but I don't particularly want to fly through any icing in a Piper Cherokee. So if I could even make it up to flight level 210 without passing out in a Cherokee, this pirate might be of interest to me. 
Now, I don't want to spend a bunch of extra time talking about it, but there are a few extra contractions you might see with the icing reports. Clear icing can be particularly scary, especially if it's moderate or severe like you see here. You may also see a mix of the two, or even this NEG for negative, if the pilots didn't notice any icing. Just be careful with this one. If the forecast is calling for icing and the pilot doesn't notice it right here, that doesn't mean the icing doesn't exist. It might be severe clear over here and this guy picked up nothing because he went through a hole in the clouds. Another Another code you might see is this WV. This one stands for wind velocity and this is red just like you would expect. In this example the wind velocity is 270 at 35 knots. Too easy. Next we have the turbulence pyrip. And to make things simple you can find this with the code TB. This can come in a few different flavors. A lot of times the pilot will only report the intensity. As you can see here the pilot only reported light turbulence. Down here, the pilot reported light to moderate turbulence. Then some of these guys are reporting a smooth ride, so that might be a good altitude to cruise at. Delta guys love giving smooth ride pyrips, so if you want to work for Delta someday, you should probably start making those on the radio. But anyways, with these turbulence pyrips, you could see anything from light, moderate, severe, or even extreme. Now I've had my share of moderate turbulence and even a little bit of severe, but I definitely never want to experience extreme turbulence. You may also see turbulence reported with the duration. For example, you may see intermittent, occasional, or constant. Now, if the pilot experienced the turbulence at an altitude other than where he made the report, you would also see this in this section. In this example, this pilot experienced light chop from flight level 240 to flight level 270. So once again, I'm not super concerned about this one in the plane I'm flying today. Next, you may see some remarks at the end which would be indicated by an RM. Now there's a million different things that you might see in the remarks, but one of the main things I'm concerned about is information on hazardous weather like this one. LLWS plus or minus 15 knots surface to 300 feet. This stands for low level wind shear and this can be some scary stuff if you don't know it's there. You may also see things like this which would indicate mountain wave turbulence or even notes about the braking action on the runway. That might be nice to know about if you like being able to stop after you land. Okay, now that I've shown you the hard way to read all these, I do want to point out that you can click up here on the format and change these to a decoded view. And as you can see, these are a lot easier to understand now. Up here, they have the raw pyrip text and below that we have the decoded view. If you're wondering why I didn't lead with that, it's because I wanted to boost my watch time a little bit. But in addition to that, you might get asked this on your written exam, and personally, I think pilots should know how to read these pirates, because quite frankly, they come from us. And speaking of that, if no one makes these pilot reports, then they don't exist for other pilots to use. So if you experience something worth reporting, let ATC know. Also, as I briefly mentioned earlier, at the back of the chart supplement, not only will you find this handy sheet for deciphering pirates, but you'll also find the pirate form, which helps guide you through the information HEC needs to make a good pirate. As you can see, they have to have the first five lines of data. Then, the next information you provide is dependent on the weather you're experiencing. For example, let's call up Memphis Center and give them a turbulence pirate. Memphis Center, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, pirate. Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, go ahead with report. This is a routine pyrup. I am 25 miles directly south of the Batesville Airport. Kilo Bravo Victor X-ray at 4,500 feet MSL in a Cessna 172. I'm currently experiencing occasional light to moderate turbulence. In addition to that, it looks like the base of these clouds are about 5,500 feet MSL. When you make these pilot reports, you're going to mess up. But if you forget something, don't worry. ATC will ask you for the information they need to complete the report. And the guy that's about to fly through that area will thank you when he sees that you took the 30 seconds it takes to make the pyrip. And we're all safer because of it. I hope you learned something today that will make you a better pilot. If you want to keep getting better, try this video right here and I'll meet you over there. See ya. Aircraft calling. Safe position.